Right, we're on 199 to the pin. And first shot of the day, first practice swing of the day right now. Oh dear. Let's see if I can monitor this club head. See if I can understand where the club head's going to go. I want the club head to do that. I want to make sure I can control the path of the club head. Can I do that? I've pushed it a little bit. It should be okay though. Yep, well, that's all right. So yes, we're on monitoring the club head. That's a hard thing to do. There's something else we can monitor instead though, which is much, much easier. Just grab another ball. Try and not push this one right of target this time. What else could we monitor instead of the club head? Now, if club head, of course, when I take my waggle and I take the club back, I'm able to see what sort of path I want the club to go on. Is it going out? Is it coming in? So I can monitor the club head path. But again, it's hard to have full control of that because it travels so quickly through impact. And on takeaway, that is a shocker. Let's just move on. <laughs> It wasn't that bad, they both hit the green. Okay, quickly before we start this video, if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, if you enjoy the content, please do, it's free of charge. Also hit the bell notification for instant notifications of all my videos and click the thumbs up button. Now the thumb is a serious topic today. I notice how the dots on the thumb work how they pass each other. As the video continues, you'll understand more how that works. Therefore, we can educate the hands and understand it a little bit better from a visual and a feeling point of view. Thanks for subscribing. Okay, hitting driver. Now this driver club head is going to travel from zero miles an hour to probably about 108 miles an hour within one second. That is serious acceleration. How can I control where that club head's going to go? Or feel where that club head's going to go? I can't even see it. It's traveling so fast over such a short period of time. So my body being the center of rotation, the club head is the furthest point from the center of rotation. So therefore it's traveling the fastest. Now in relation to the club head, the club shaft at different points is going to travel slower the closer it gets to the butt end of the club. And then at the butt end, that's a piece of the club or the part of the club that's going to travel the slowest of all. So that is probably the easiest part to control. So now the only point of contact I have with the golf club is obviously my hands. So educating and understanding where the hands go will take an impact or influence on the club head so it's much easier to control club head path, low point, angle of attack by educating the hands. You can't feel the club head. You can see the club head, you can see the blur of the club head through impact, but that's all initiated from the hand path. So educating the hands will give you a better feeling of takeaway and through impact. And when you're doing that, they're more in view for longer. They're more in view for longer. That's probably not even English. But what I mean by that though, is when I take my pre-shot routine, my little waggle before I play my shot, I can see where my hands go for longer than the club head because the club head's now out of view, but the hands are still in view. And if I can focus on where the hands go, feel the pressures in my hands, then the club head will take care of itself, assuming my grip is correct. If I've got a strong grip, weak grip, funky grip, then obviously that's going to have some sort of influence on the club face. However, monitoring the hands or educating the hands is much easier than trying to focus on the club head. Now, it comes to putting, we'll discuss shortly. I'm going to give you a little drill or something to, to see and feel and how you can get this correct with chipping, putting and the long game. But there just now, I'm educating my hands, I'm feeling where my hands are going to go for the whole action of the swing. And then I step on there and repeat the hand action. And I've hit it pretty straight because I was understanding or educating where the hands were going to go. Let's do one more. So taking the focus away from the club head, how many times do you stand there? And you think, okay, I'll take my club out here. Now if you take the club out there, the hands are getting away from the body. And then they're going to have to drop back in. So if you're trying to play that shot for some reason, or you're trying to shape the shot, then look at the hand path. Feel where the hands are going to go. Don't feel where the club head's going to go. Feel where the hands are going to go. If you're going out there and then hands come in, you can feel that. You can draw that little figure of eight there. 
with the hands, if you take the club more inside in the way back like I do, I can feel the hands coming closer to the right hip on the way back and then extending out on the way through. So I can educate my hands, I can educate my takeaway, I can educate where the club head's going to go by monitoring the hands. That was good. Let's move on. Right, I've got my second shot here now, par five. I can't reach the green in two, so I'm going to play short. I'm just going to hit a five iron, but I want to keep the ball low. Now I'm going to put some marks on my hand using my Sharpie pen. This is what you need for your chipping and putting as well. This is going to highlight the fact that we can keep the golf club low by educating the hands. So watch this. Take your right thumb for right-handed golfers. Draw a little dot on your thumbnail. Little dots up the line. There we go. Like so. So what do the dots mean? Well, the dots mean they're in a position on the hand. There's a perfect alignment there. Now, if I come in at impact with the, the line or the dots at an angle behind me, then of course I'm adding loft to the golf club. Forward, I'm taking loft off. So I'm now educating the hands to take the loft off the golf club. So I can lead with the hands first. That way I'm going to keep the golf ball lower. So as I say, I'm now hitting five iron. This will probably leave me about 80 yards. I've hit this well. But I want to keep the loft down because there's quite a lot of wind today. So I take my address position. I can see where the dots on my hand are and I can see where I want to go to impact. Now that is another way of educating the hands. The visual line of the dots is fantastic on my address position. They lean up towards my chin and then from there I want them leaning left of my chin at impact. So that way I know I've taken loft off the golf club. So in address position there, at impact I want to be here. So you can see what's happened to the line of dots. How it's moved, they've added loft. Neutral or address position, there's impact where I want the club to be, taking the loft off and if you can course you can see the shafts leaning forward. It's also such a great visual on the way back, you can gauge where the line goes. So for path as well, you can gauge where this line's going, exact line's going, is it going out the way, is it coming in the way, is it square? You can fully gauge that as well and you can almost see the blur of that, it's a, it's a great, as I say, fantastic visual aid. So five iron taking loft off or leaning hands forward. Let's educate it. I'm there, there. Educate my hand into there. And of course the body's moving to assist this, but I'm educating the hands and not the club head. I don't want to visualize the club head shaft leaning forward or the loft being taken off the golf club or the top of the club passing the bottom. I'm not bothered about that. As if I get my hands into correct position, that will naturally happen. So monitoring the hands there, there. Great, I then step on. I know where I want the hands to go, feel that, feel that, I can see it, I can visually see it, step on to repeat that. I've just stung a little five iron up there, ball turf strike, angle of attack, nice and steep because the hands are forward and of course I've kept the ball low, it's a runner, it's a worker. Okay, I've now left myself 95 yards, so I want to keep this quite low. There is wind there, although the flag's not moving. There's lots of green to work with, so I want to try and keep this lower. So I'm going to roll the hands a little bit more, because I am a field player. When it comes to shorter shots like this one, I don't want to balloon it up in there. There's lots of trouble to the right of the green as well, and the pin's on the right. So I want to try and play a little hooky one in there to make sure I miss to the left. So I want to feel as though the hands roll over. I want that line of dots to roll over this time as I come through impact. So the line of dots will be pretty well vertical at impact and then rolling over. So I'm watching the dots there, I can see the dots. My head's going with the handle of the club to ensure I can feel what's going to happen to the club head. Now of course, people can look at the club head and monitor, that's what has to happen. But as I've mentioned, just all the way up this hole, educating the hands is much easier because that's a position or it's a place where you have feelings. You can't feel the club head apart from impact because it goes up the shaft, but you can't really feel where the club head is. You can certainly feel where your hands are. You can feel where the club head is. You have some sort of club head awareness, but it comes from the hands. So here we go, 95 yards. A little roller. Body's activated as well. You can feel that. Brilliant, this should come nice and low in there. 50 degree wedge, aiming just on the pin. Roll over to the left slightly. Oh yes. There we go, up she goes, that's, that's great, it's about 12 feet, came in low, kicked into the left and stopped very quickly 
fantastic. I love that shot with a wedge where you roll over a little bit more because there's less of a shear, there's less of a sort of slice on the golf ball, so there's more interaction with the grooves on the ball, so the ball runs up the face a little bit more because you've gathered it more, that's where you get your spin. That's probably a completely separate video. Nice little free tip for you there. You're welcome. So you can see this huge runoff area to the right that I was trying to avoid. The pin was so close to the back right of the green as well. Took it on with the turn because I was able to educate the hands to have the confidence And I've put it one, two, three, four, so yes, 12 feet. It's for birdie, an educated hands birdie. I'm taking that all day long. All day long. Right, we're at the seventh par four, three, nine, two yards. So the green's over the corner of those trees. So I'm now looking for a fade. It's obviously hitting driver. I want to start at left of the trees and fade it down there. So hand path's going to change dramatically here. Hand path's going to be out to in. And club face will look after itself. So I'm just going to start with the club facing pretty square. Take my dress position. I'm really purely thinking about the waggle here. So I'm aware that my thumb, my right thumb, the lower dot, is going away from the body. Lower dot's going away from the body and then back into the body, which has given me the path of out to in. So having several dots up the thumb, you're able to aware or be aware of what dot can do what. So looking at the lower dot here, for me, is going to exaggerate the fact that it's going away from the body. So start off pretty square to target, as I say. Lower dot's going away, so away and then in, away and in, away and in to get that path. And then from there I take it away and back in, educating the hands to get that left to right ball flight. And it started a little bit further left than the light, but I got exactly the shape I was after because I was able to educate the hands. So yeah, that started a little bit further left than I'd like to have started it. But I certainly got the shape I was after because I educated those hands. Apologies for the noise in the background. That was the greenkeepers on the course, on the hole behind, just changing the hole position. So I've got 120 exactly. I'm going to play that same roll wedge. So I've got an A wedge, 50 degrees. I'm going to try and play a little draw one again. So again, educating the hands to be a little bit more roll over. In conjunction, of course, with the body opening up, so it's not a complete just flip of the hands. But I feel in this shot, which I should have mentioned on the last hole, that I feel as though the bottom dot, the bottom dot rolls past the top dot on this shot. So the bottom dot, the dot in my thumb, nail, as it comes through, it rolls past the top dot. That's the feeling I'm after. Of course, when I played the fade off the tee, it was very much the opposite. The top dot led the shot because I wanted to play the fade, whereas this one I'm trying to play the draw and the bottom dot passes the top dot. Which is why it's more constructive than just drawing a line on your hand, which is what somebody's bound to say. So educating the hands to play a draw, what have I got? 120. So this is pretty much a full, full 50 degree wedge. 120. Getting that bottom dot to pass the top dots. So the bottom dot of the thumb is travelling further and faster than the top and get a little hooky one in there, educating the hands. Oh, it's good. Get up. Yeah, it's good. So just, just right of the pin. Again, about 12 feet. Okay, chance for another birdie with educated hands. That'd be nice. Back to back birdies. Yeah. Good effort, Kevin Nah. Nearly. <laughs> okay, so putting, how does the thumb work on the putting or the dots work on the putting? 
When you take the putter back, so many people tell me they can't take the putter back straight, they, they kind of wobble it, it goes away in a different line and its angle of attack's a bit funky and can't really get follow through. Don't watch the putter head, that's the last thing you do is watch the putter head. If I was to watch the putter head when I took it back, it would absolutely freak me out, don't want that. So do not watch the putter head, just trust the fact you have a good stroke. Faldo talked about this, Faldo talked about watching your thumbnail. So again, that's educating the hands. Watch the thumbnail. The thumbnail is going to go straight back and straight through in a nice line. Of course, the arc will come inside the longer the putt, but that's going naturally going to happen because you can't continue your thumb out there. So just watch the thumbnail. So thumbnail, thumbnail. You know how hard you're going to hit it, how fast the putt is. You know what to do. You can look at the hole on your practice stroke to feel the length of stroke, then come back down, watch the thumbnail. Now I'm not even sure if my putter head's going straight back or straight through, but the thumbnail looks pretty square. The line of dots stay in a straight line. There's not too much deviation this way or that way. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I would take my putt, I would look at my target to feel the distance, then back down, have a couple of strokes, ensuring that those dots stay in line, and I'm watching really the thumbnail, and then step on, and this time I look at the ball, look back at the thumbnail, look back at the ball, and then continue through, and play the shot. So just have that awareness of thumbnail, ball, thumbnail, ball. You can look at the thumbnail for the putt if you like. I prefer to look at the ball, but there's no harm in doing that. Either or is gonna work. And the advantage of all that is what? You're no longer looking at the putter head. You're no longer bothered about if the club face is square. You're no bothered about the path. Nothing like that takes over or interferes with your train of thought. You know you've got a good stroke because the thumbnail's dictated that on your practice stroke. And regardless as to whether you look at the ball or the thumbnail on the stroke, you know you're going to play a good putt. You know you're in a position or you preset yourself in a position with a rehearsal that was absolutely spot on. Just repeat that, it's brilliant. So for those of you that are still watching who have followed this video all the way, very well done indeed. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for hitting the thumbs up button. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.